Happy New Year to each of you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's get back to our walk in the Word as we look at Romans chapter 8, uh, looking at the spirit life, looking at what God has given to us through the aid and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Today we are in Romans 8 at verses 28 through verse number 30. Very familiar passage of Scripture, verses 28 through verse number 30. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 is an often quoted passage of Scripture. And it's a good passage of Scripture to commit to memory and to know for in times of distress or when you don't know which way to go or when your back is up against the wall. But let's look deeper into what this verse is saying to us as we look, first of all, at the determination of God's promise, the determination of God's promise. For we know, that word know is a word of confidence. We're not, we're not guessing. We're not maybe sowing. We are not iffy. We are not diffident. Uh, we are not uh, wondering. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. There are some things we believers ought to just know by our faith. Uh, we ought to just have confidence in it. That word know is I have confidence from experience. Uh, I believe it because I've tried it. I, I know because I've been through it. We know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have another building, a house not made by hands, but eternal in the heavens. We know in whom we have believed and that he's able to keep that which we have committed unto him against that day. It's the same word, no. We know, that's confidence. But not only is there confidence in that verse, there's completeness. And we know that all things, all things, sweet things, there's some sweet things that happen in our lives, like, like the birth of a child, or a gift at Christmas, or a promotion on a job, or a brand new house, or a new car or just a new attitude. Those are sweet things that come into our lives that gives us the completeness of God's promise. But then also sorrowful things happen in our lives that still work together for our good. Sorrowful things like the death of a loved one or the loss of health or whatever it is that we are struggling with. And then there are satanic things that still work together for the good. The enemy will try all he can to trip us up and to make us uh, lose confidence in God's trustworthiness. Or sometimes people that we think really love us have turned to be evil towards us. The satanic things, that like, like what happened in Joseph's life when his brother sold him into slavery. God even worked that together for good. And then there are sinful things that work together for our good. Sinful meaning that God does not lead us into sin so that things can work out. But in God's forgiveness of our sins, we learn and we turn away from those sins and we become stronger and better Christians because we've been through some sinful and painful experiences. So the completeness of the promise has to do with God takes sweet things and sorrowful things and satanic things and sinful things to use all of those things together in a chemistry of the cross uh, to work it out for our good. For we know, confidence, that all things, completeness, work together for the good. There's a, there's a cause in our life. That, that there, there's a reason we go through what we go through and stand up under what we have to stand up under. Because God is working something out in our lives. He's determined to make us more and more like Jesus. And whatever he has to do to bring us to that end, God is working it out for our good. The scripture says we ought to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. That does not mean 
that we work for salvation, it means that since we are saved, we are working towards something. And we are working towards perfection. We are working towards being uh, the perfect creatures that God would have us to be. It will not be in this life. We will never be perfect in this life. We will always stumble and falter and fail. Because you remember Jesus uh, said to Peter, Satan desires to have you that he might sift you as wheat. But I've already prayed for you that your faith would fail not. He does not say that Peter's flesh will not fail, but that his faith will not fail. God has a cause for the things that we go through in our lives to bring us to uh, the perfect man that he wants us to be or the perfect woman that he wants us to be in Jesus Christ. But there's a condition also in that verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called. The called. Uh, God uh, does not equip those of us except we have been called. Uh, there are some people, the scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. And the chosen ones of us are the ones who love God. And so since we love God, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. He's working his purposes out in our lives, but only in the lives of those who are the called according to his purpose. Not only is there the determination of God's promise in these verses, but there's the determine, determination of God's purpose. Let's look at verses 29 and verse 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. There's been uh, much question over the years with uh, uh, Bible thinkers and and people who study the scripture about this matter of uh, predestination. Does God predetermine who is saved? Uh, does, does God predetermine who's going to heaven and who is going to hell? This matter of predetermination or predestination, uh, God already knows all things. It has to do, first of all, with God's omniscience. God knows everything. There's nothing God cannot not know. He knows everything, but God does not uh, uh, know everything in terms of uh, he makes us saved or makes us lost. We have a choice. God has given each of us free will, and all of us have a will to come to God and a will to reject God. And God is all powerful. That has to do with his omnipotence, but God will not force us to come to him. His love does not force us. It draws us and, and woos us and attracts us and, and uh, chases us, but God's love does not make us come to him. He knows who's going to be saved. He knows who the redeemed are. But the reason why we have to evangelize is because we don't know who the select ones are. We don't know who are the elect of God. Uh, so God gives us the responsibility to, to preach the gospel and to spread the good news because uh, whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be formed in the image of his son. He knows that, but we don't know that, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he called. Whom he called, he justified, and whom he justified, he glorified. Anybody who comes into the family of God through Jesus Christ has been justified. We've been justified by faith. And then this justification which is salvation, leads into sanctification where we are growing more and more like Jesus Christ and it will ultimately end in our glorification when we are with God forever in eternity. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Walk in the Word. Look forward to looking with you again in some verses next time. God bless you.